Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Keith Warner, Education and Training Manager for the Hartford County <coughs> Sheriff's Office. On behalf of Sheriff Jeffrey R. Gailman, I welcome you to the graduation of the 31st Law Enforcement Academy. As the graduating class enters the auditorium, please remain seated. Please stand for the presentation of colors and please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem performed by Thomas Tyson and Jillian Chase, graduates of Harper Technical High School. I would ask that all law enforcement members in uniform and all veterans render the military salute during our national anthem. All others, please pay respect to the flag by placing your right hand over your heart. Commands will be given by our drill instructors. Say, can you see by the dawn's 
early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled We'd like to thank Thomas and Jillian. That was a, a wonderful uh, presentation of the national anthem. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Ken Tipton will now present the invocation for tonight's graduation. Thank you for this night of celebration. We celebrate with these recruits have finished their task. We celebrate with the families that are here. We celebrate with our instructors. And Father, we celebrate with all of these agencies that are represented here on this stage and in this auditorium. And Father, we celebrate the fact that now we're going to be a little bit more safer with them on the job. We pray that this evening will honor, will glorify you, and we ask it in your strong name. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to introduce the distinguished members on the dais. Please hold your applause until the introductions have been completed. Sheriff Jeffrey R. Gaylor. The Honorable Angela M. Eves, the Administrative Judge of the Circuit Court for Harford County. Colonel Stephen Bodeway, Chief Deputy, Harford County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Albert L. Liebno, Deputy Director, Maryland Police Correctional Training Commission. Michael Capasso, Warden, Harford County Detention Center. Major William Davis, Chief, Police Operations Bureau. Major Jack Simpson, Chief, Administrative Services Bureau. Major Michael Gullion, Chief, Correctional Services Bureau and Assistant Warden, Harford County Detention Center. Charles Moore, Chief, Bel Air Police Department. Matthew Donnelly, Chief, Elkton Police Department. 
Senior Deputy Kenneth Smith, Harford County Sheriff's Office, is the longest tenured deputy with 33 years of loyal and dedicated service to the citizens of Harford County. Senior Deputy Smith will begin his 34th year with the Harford County Sheriff's Office on October 17, 2016. Reverend Ken Tipton, Calvary Baptist Church in Bel Air. Members of the Sheriff's Command Staff, please stand to be recognized. Thank you. It is my pleasure and honor to present the dignitaries who are with us tonight for this very important moment. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been made. Maryland State Senator Robert G. Cassidy. Maryland State Delegate Teresa E. Rowley. Harford County Clerk of the Court James J. Rowley. Harford County Council Vice President James V. McMahon, Jr. Harford County Councilman Mike Perrone, Jr. Representing State's Attorney Cassidy is Harford County Assistant State's Attorney David W. Ryden. Representing County Executive Glassman is Senior Government Affairs Specialist LaWanda Edwards. Representing School Superintendent Barbara Canavan is Bob Benedetto, Safety and Security, Harford County Public Schools. Christopher Swain, Director, Public Safety, Harford Community College, and retired deputy. Should say retired major. Dr. Diana Phillips, President, Harford Community College. Dr. Phillips, a native of West Virginia, is a veteran of the United States Navy and an accomplished academic leader with more than 20 years as a Chief Executive Officer. The Harford County Sheriff's Office Training Academy moved to Joppa Hall on the campus of Harford Community College in March of 1990. The remarkable campus and the overwhelming acceptance has served as a gateway for many deputies and officers as they began their service to the communities they serve. On behalf of these graduates and the many before them, thank you for such a positive relationship. A better description would be our partnership. In addition, Harford Community College has ensured that each of our graduating recruits will receive 29 credits towards their Associate of Applied Science degree, a program that was developed to assist the Harford County Sheriff's Office in its effort to develop a highly professional Sheriff's Office. Dr. Phillips, we thank you for your service to our country and welcome you to Harford County and look forward to building on the already strong relationship that our office has with Harford Community College. Thank you. Also, I'd like to also mention um, or introduce retired Sheriff William Kunkel. And he's out there in the audience someplace. Thank you, sir. Would also like to recognize and thank the members of the Harford County Sheriff's Office, allied law enforcement and public safety officers and first responders in attendance tonight. Let's give everyone a round of applause. I would also like to introduce members of the Academy staff that worked with the graduates during the last 27 weeks. Captain Jonathan Press, Mr. Jim Pangratz, Law Enforcement Coordinator, Sergeant Robert Burgess, our range master, and my sure Rob went to, and Miss Linda Thompson, the lady that was seated out, seated out at the table when you came in, our administrative technician. Thank you. I would also like to recognize the drill instructors for the dedicated work they have provided during the 27-week training. Please stand. Job well done.
This Academy class began February 2, 2016. It has been a challenging yet rewarding 27 weeks. The Harford County Sheriff's Office Training Academy provides each of the candidates a rigorous academic program along with an equally demanding physical education program. Their determination is to be commended. Congratulations to each of you for a job well done. During their time at the Training Academy, the recruits have been exposed to 982 and a half hours of training and tasks that I am sure have created lasting memories and prepared them for their career in law enforcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sheriff Jeffrey R. Gaylor to the podium for the Sheriff's remarks. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, academy staff, our drill instructors, and most importantly, entrance level class 31. Let me start by saying how honored I am to be with here with you tonight, your graduation night. Tonight is the end of your six month journey to become a Hartford County Sheriff's Office deputy, or for our Elkton officers and our Bel Air officer, a police officer, all sworn to uphold the Constitution and enforce the laws of our state and the jurisdiction that you are going to. Tonight, your academy journey is complete. The thorough and exhaustive background and hiring process and the past 27 weeks of the academy has brought you to the gateway of our profession, where you will begin a new journey on a new path. Like no class before you, and I pray no class to follow you, you have witnessed more closely what is asked of police officers in today's world. As a member of this class and as members of our Sheriff's Office family, you shared in the pain of our family when on February 10th, our brothers, Senior Deputy Pat Daly and Deputy First Class Mark Logsman were lost at the hands of a violent criminal. This year, a record number of police officers, 33 police officers so far, have, have lost their lives to violence. You are graduating and going out into a world where law enforcement is unfairly being vilified and being portrayed as having a lack of character. In the past couple of years, we have seen such dramatic change in our profession, not all of it bad, but so much of it the result of accusation and hype instead of fact and need. I've spoken many times about the tragedy of September 11th, 2001, but also of the focused appreciation and respect our police officers and firefighters received for their heroic actions that day. That day, white officers, black officers, Asian officers, Hispanic officers, male officers, female officers, joined by an equally diverse group of firefighters, worked to save lives. They saved people of all races, religions, creeds, nationalities, and so on. Many of these officers and firefighters gave their very lives to save all lives. Not once did we hear some nonsense that a public safety officer turned their back on an individual because of race, gender, or any other factor. As a profession, we recognize one clear fact, and that is all lives do matter. September 11th was a large-scale example of what has happened and what does happen every single day in this country. We saw this on a smaller but equally heartbreaking scale a short time ago in Dallas when police officers moved towards danger and towards protecting members of the community who were protesting the police when a sniper began firing on the crowd. It's simple, police officers work to protect and save lives. In the 30 years of my police career, I've tried to live and work in accordance with three steadfast principles. I believe in these core values so much that they were the basis for my platform that brought me to the office of sheriff. And they are competence, character, and commitment. You have heard those words a few times over the past 27 weeks. In my opinion, all three are necessary traits for anyone in law enforcement who has joined for the right reasons and who hopes to make a difference through their service. To a degree, each of you have demonstrated competence and commitment in being chosen for a seat in this class and in completing your academy training. Going forward, you will improve your competence with the experience that comes with service, and hopefully you will remain strongly committed 
to the path you have chosen, even during the longest and most challenging of shifts or assignments. That leaves character, which in my opinion is the most important. Without character, you are on a path to failure. You have passed and surpassed many hurdles meant to evaluate your character, and you are here today, and of that you can be proud, but your character, your integrity, can be lost with just one poor decision, with just one lapse of judgment. Do not allow that to ever happen. In the aftermath of losing Pat and Mark, what touched us at the Sheriff's Office the most was the outpouring of love and support from our Harford County community. Love and support that continues today. I have called this the silent majority making themselves heard. Trust me, there are so many more citizens who believe in us and who believe in you. There are so many more men and women who value the service you are going to be providing to the communities here in Harford County, in Bel Air, and in Elkton. And there are so many more men and women who love and respect our profession. As you begin the next chapter of your law enforcement career, keep these people in mind. Know that they have your back as long as you are doing the right thing, the way you have been trained and educated to do. Again, you would not be here today if you had not lived a life focused on integrity, good judgment, and decision making, a life of competence, character, and commitment. Take these strengths with you as you move forward with courage, honor, and integrity. Going forward, it will be your character that will be on display every day and every shift. It is judged best by what you do and how you do it, and never more so than when you believe no one is looking. Trust me, someone is always looking, but it should not matter. Trust in your training, keep to your mission, and there is nothing to worry about. Your academy staff and your instructors have prepared you well, but your future is up to you. We honor our fallen heroes by training our living heroes. To so many people, on so many calls, both big and small, serious and even not so serious, you will be those heroes. Your career and what you will become is now in your hands. It's now time for each of you to take the next step. During the services for Senior Deputy Pat Daly, I read a poem called Walking the Point. Part of that poem reads, Society may not be a company of soldiers, but it certainly has and needs somebody walking the point. Every time you go out the precinct door, every time you answer the radio call, and every time you stop to check out something suspicious. These are all examples of how you will take your time walking the point for your community, for your agency, for your fellow deputies and police officers. It is my hope and prayer that as you do this, you do so safely and by using the training you have just completed. Finally, as you soak in this accomplishment, take a minute to stop feeling busy and reflect on what brought you here. You did not get here alone. And you can look out in the audience and see that that is the case. Remember to give special thanks to your family and friends who have supported you. They will continue to play a large role in your career as a deputy or as a police officer. I wish you all the best in the years ahead. Be safe and God bless each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Dino. Our guest speaker tonight is the Honorable Angela M. Eves, the Administrative Judge, Circuit Court, Harford County, Maryland. The Honorable Angela M. Eves is the Administrative Judge of the Circuit Court for Harford County. She has been a judge in Harford County for 15 years, first appointed to the District Court in 2000 by Governor Paris Glendening, and then the Circuit Court in 2007 by Governor Martin O'Malley. In addition to overseeing the operations of the Circuit Court, Judge Eves also presides over criminal cases and civil cases. She currently serves on the several statewide judicial committees, including the Court of Appeals, Rules Committee, the Maryland Professionalism Center, and, and the Domestic Violence Subcommittee. She is an instructor for courses through the Maryland Judicial Institute and the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges. Judge Eves was born in the Republic of Panama and moved to the United States in the early 1960s. She is a graduate of the University of Texas School of Law and the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs in Austin, Texas, with degrees in law and public administration. 
She practiced law briefly in Dallas, Texas with the city attorney's office, then moved to Maryland where she continued her legal career with the Legal Aid Bureau in Harford County and the Office of the Maryland Attorney General in Baltimore City. In addition to her judicial duties, Judge Eves is active in national, state, and local bar associations and in the Harford County community as a volunteer for civic and nonprofit, nonprofit organizations. Judge Eves also has been honored for her professional and volunteer activities as the recipient of the following awards. Leadership in Law, Maryland's Top 100 Women, Harford Leadership Academy Top 20, and Associated Black Charities Living Legal Legend, Judge Eves. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you, Sheriff Gaylor, for extending the invitation for me to speak at this event this evening. I could not be more honored, and I hope my remarks convey the gratitude and respect we should all have for law enforcement officers. I am especially honored to speak to you this evening since, as the Sheriff stated earlier, this Academy class is the first to graduate after Senior Deputy Patrick Daly and Deputy First Class Mark Lawson were taken from our community much too soon. And as we continue to grieve while embracing their families, both biological and law enforcement families, we are grateful that there is, however, a silver lining. We are incredibly proud that you did not let it prevent you from following through with the commitment to serve and to protect. Congratulations on your graduation today. I came by my respect for law enforcement in a very unusual way. When I was around 10 years old, living in Germany where my father was stationed, our family was there. One day after we were at the table eating dinner, my brother and sister finished dinner. They were able to go back outside and start playing with our friends again but I was still at the dining room table with my mother. My mother was a native of Panama, and she had a strict rule. You had to be a member of the Clean Plate Club. You could not leave the table until you had eaten everything on your plate. Well, I just could not finish a small piece of turkey. There was no gravy on it. So I saw my opportunity when my mother went into the kitchen to wash dishes. I decided that I would cut the small piece of meat in half, leave part of it on my plate, and take the rest of it and put it in my underwear, under my shorts, on the right side. Well, my mother came out of the kitchen and I had a piece of turkey in my mouth. I was kind of faking chewing and she said, you ate all that meat? And I chewed and I said, mm-hmm. She said, stand up. I stood up. She patted me down. <laughs> she found a lump where 10-year-old girls do not have lumps. She grabbed it, shorts, underwear, the meat fell to the floor. She said, now pick it up, put it on the table, and eat it. <laughs> I wish we had a dog, unfortunately we didn't. Well, then after that, my mother went outside. The building where we lived had balconies on the front. The neighbor across the hall was on her balcony. They were chatting. I heard one of my friends come up and say, can Angie come back outside and play? And my mom said, no. She hid her, her meat in her panties and she's on punishment. Well, that day I realized that my mother was the law in the house, and she patted me down. She put me on house arrest and served up my punishment. So those are my earliest law enforcement memories. In all seriousness, though, 
I am the daughter of a retired Army sergeant who, after 23 years of serving our country, took a job with the Colleen Police Department in Texas and then the Texas Department of Corrections. And I really can't remember a time when I was not aware of law enforcement being an honorable and desirable profession, not because of the many dramas or comedies that prolifer pro proliferated the television landscape of the 70s and 80s, but because I have seen up close the pride that comes from within those that don the uniform. Some, I want to give you, well, I want to give you a message of, that's in many parts today as you begin your law enforcement careers. First, some will judge you unfairly for the decisions that you make, whether you make them after considered reflection or whether you make them in the precious few seconds you have when a seemingly normal event turns horribly wrong. They will evaluate you by unfair standards, as if being a law enforcement officer, you should be perfect. But as a judge for the last 16 years, I know a little bit about human nature and human behavior, but I know a lot also about countless displays of courage by law enforcement officers. From a traffic event to a shootout where you confront the danger, head on. And still some, not all, will criticize your training, brand you as ill-motivated, and at times they will question your morals. But most of us know that you are in this out of a sense of duty and a great desire to make sure that chaos does not trump peace and civility. Second, Ignore the uninformed who will say that you are unprepared and ill-equipped to do your jobs. They will criticize you harshly based on the actions of a few bad apples. But there are bad apples in every barrel, regardless of the occupation. And sometimes we need a reminder that the good apples always, they always, overwhelmingly outnumber the bad apples. We see the pride that you will have in your mission by the sureness of your footsteps and how you carry yourselves. The firm but polite tone of voice you use when helping citizens and the confidence in the quality of your training and your work. Finally, you should expect the naysayers to argue that you have an us against them mentality. But we all know that you are our sons, our daughters, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, and our friends and neighbors, and that you will summon the courage to help us when we need it, and sometimes when we least deserve it. We know that you face the same pressures of life that we all do, making sure your families are fed not only with food, but also with love and emotional support, finding time to enjoy the good that life has to offer, and coming home to them at the end of not just a long day, but a long and trying day. So I have six pieces of advice for you. Number one, do your best. No one can ask for more. Number two, remind yourselves that every so often, most people are good and try to do the right thing, and they know that you think that of them as well. Number three, have faith in your judgment, but from time to time, re-examine it to make sure it aligns with your values and your morals. Number four, be the change you want to see in the world. You are one of the best examples of optimism and faith that humankind has to offer. Number five, never forget that by choosing this profession of law enforcement, you already have the respect of the vast majority of us. 
You may never convince the rest, but don't ever stop trying. Which brings me to my last piece of advice. When I say don't stop trying to convince those that don't respect you, you will learn that there are people out there that are mentally ill, crazy people who are not mentally ill, mean people, disrespectful people, and people who just don't care that you are trying to do something good. But be careful and listen to your gut. Trust the training you have received to protect yourselves so that you go home to your loved ones in one piece. In closing, I would like to leave you with a metaphor for the honor, respect, and gratitude that we all have for you. Now, I don't really know if this is a true story or not, but I hope it resonates with you the way it resonated with me the first time that I heard it nearly 20 years ago. A young boy of about five or six years of age was at home with his grandparents while his parents were out running errands. He was quite energetic, and they eventually became tired of chasing after him. And they looked forward to mom and dad coming home soon. So they came up with a very clever idea of something to occupy him until the parents came home. They had this idea to tear a page out of a magazine. And this page had the picture of the continents of the world on it. North and South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, and Australia. They told him, after tearing the pieces of the magazine page up, this is a puzzle, and we want you to put it back together. And if you do it correctly, you will get a big surprise. Well, they expected it to take him at least 10 minutes to put the pieces of the puzzle back together just in time for mom and dad to walk through the door and collect him. But to their surprise, he was done in less than a minute. They were stunned. How could their young grandson know how to put the pieces together so quickly and correctly? Incredulously, they asked him, how did you do that so fast? He said with the innocence that many of us lose far too soon. Well, on the other side was the picture of a policeman. And I knew that if I put the policeman back together, the world would be all right. Take care of your brothers and sisters in the special world of law enforcement. And never let, forget those that paid the ultimate sacrifice, like Pat and Mark. And know that your other partners in the justice community need you and stand with you. You are not in this alone. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your commitment to peace and justice. But most of all, thank you and Godspeed. Thank you. Judges, thank you so much uh, for the, that inspirational uh, speech to our recruits. Uh, we have a plaque here we'd like, uh, the sheriff would like to present to you. It says, presented to the Honorable Angela M. Eves, keynote speaker, graduation exercise for the Hartford County Sheriff's Office, and um, has Sheriff um, Jeffrey R. Gala. Entrance Level Class 31, or EL31, as we know it, received extensive academic training while in the academy. Recruits are required to obtain a minimum score of 80% on all academic tests. 
as well as 100% on all Training Commission task objectives. Each of our graduates exceeded these minimum standards, but only one can be number one. The class valedictorian for EL31 is Recruit Burris. Good evening. My name is Zach Burris, and beyond my wildest dreams, I was selected as a valedictorian for Hartford County Sheriff's Office EL Class 31. I never envisioned myself being able to say those words, but here we are tonight. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. On behalf of EL Class 31, I'd like to say that it's an honor to be up here on the stage tonight, and we couldn't have done it without any of you here in the crowd. Regardless of whether you're police, civilian, or anything in between, your relationships, your interactions, and most importantly, your support has played a key part in getting us here. First of all, I'll start with thanking Sheriff Gaylor and the command staff. You took a risk on giving us the opportunity to start this endeavor, and for that, we are very grateful. Second, I'd like to thank the drill instructors. Although at times we may have been terrified, as we look back on our journey, we've seen the transformation that occurred, and that we couldn't have done it without your guidance. When we were told in the beginning, it may feel like they are messing with you, and they may be, but there is a point you'll understand at the end. We finally get it. Next, I'd like to thank Captain Crass for giving us that quote about the drill instructors. Another quote the captain gave us was, on the day you come in, thinking you know everything is the day you get handed your butt. This holds true through the academy, through our careers in law enforcement, and our everyday lives. Thank you, Captain. You've played an integral role in, play in our training, and it's been appreciated across the board. To the academy staff, Mr. Warner, Mr. Pangratz, Ms. Thompson, DFC Wood, and Rocky, thank you. You had to put up with their awkward interactions, knocking on your doors, complaints about yellow water at the water fountains, and our sometimes outlandish behavior. For myself, I'd like to thank my personal support group. To my girlfriend, Allison, you've been there through the best and worst times of this journey. As a frame of reference for everyone here, we picked up our lives in New York and moved down here just a few short weeks before the academy so I could join the sheriff's office. I couldn't have done this without her. To my family, my mom, my dad, my stepdad, my mom, er, my stepmom, my sisters, my brother-in-law, my niece, my nephew, your support has meant the world to me. To all, uh, to all of our families, wow, and thank you. That's the best way I've come up with to describe that your proce this process and your gratitude. Your support has meant the world to us. Just before the academy began, most of you came out to the orientation meeting. Um, while we have made being in the back, shaking in our boots about the drill instructors, you were told about the trials and tribulations we as a class and you as our support group would be facing in the upcoming six months. For EL31, that was just the tip of the iceberg for some of the things we'd encounter after February 1st. After making it through week one, which had felt like one of the most trying weeks in our lives, we were presented with an entirely different challenge just eight days into our training. This challenge came on February 10th, 2016, when senior DFC Pat Daly and DFC Mark Loxon were killed in the line of duty. This was an incredible tragedy for their families, the community, for the Sheriff's Office, and for EL31. While all other classes have experienced the typical first weeks of a police academy, it's unlikely that any of our classes have been dealt such a devastating blow that early in their careers. When we were addressed about the tragedy in the first days, we were told to go home, think about all this meant to us, and figure out if this was still something we wanted. I'm proud of EL31 because we did just that, and all of us that were there that day are sitting up here tonight. Since that day, we've endured 122 days with thoughts in the backs of our mind. Throughout the academy, we've undergone numerous types of trainings and classes. Some of them dealt with laws and procedures, while others dealt with stress inoculation and performance on demand drills. While all those trainings were relevant to me, what stood out as one of the most profound portions of this academy was seeing the community and this agency come together to push through those hard times. Following the events in February, deputies continued to put on their uniforms each day and take their calls for service. While they may have done so with a heavy heart, they knew their work was not done. And while I like to say we've chosen this occupation, in reality, in one way or another, it's chosen all of us in law enforcement. Despite its risks and challenges, each member of BL31 has stood up and accepted that challenge. As we begin our careers as deputies and police officers, we take the support of our families and everyone here tonight and begin to build our bonds with our new family as well. Finally, as we thank you from EO Class 31, Sheriff Baylor would like to present you with our class.
As part of the curriculum, Law Enforcement EL-31 received extensive firearm skills and safety training and were, and were each a certif certification in firearms use. They were required to shoot qualifying rounds in daylight and dim light, as well as under induced stress. Each recruit was required to fire over 1,000 rounds of ammunition. As tradition would hold, there is a competition for the best overall score, and the recipient of the class firearms proficiency score is recruit Petrovich with, with the best overall score of 100%. Recruit Petrovich. The recruit class was asked to select an individual from their class that they felt provided leadership during the training. EL31 would like to recognize recruit Cortiel for providing leadership to the class. On the plaque, it reads, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Written by John C. Maxwell. Recruit tradition of excellence at the Hartford County Sheriff's Office Training Academy, there is another tradition that is referred to as the Guidoing Ceremony. Senior Drone Instructor Matt Schuler, a Deputy First Class with the Hartford County Sheriff's Office, will now explain the tradition and the graduating class will conduct the ceremony upon his orders. DOC Matt Schuler. For centuries, military units have used flags to identify their allegiance and to lead their troops into battle. During these battles, soldiers were to guide on to their unit's flag so they would always know where they belonged. These flags became known as the guide on, and they are still used today to symbolize unity and strength. To my left, you will see the Hartford County Sheriff's Office Training Academy guide on, which symbolizes the unity and strength of our agency and the honorable profession which we serve. The ribbons affixed to this guide on represents the members of previous graduating entrance level classes. The academy staff chooses a recruit from each class whom they believe has shown the most overall improvement and has earned the honor of affixing their class ribbon to our guide on. For EO 31, this honor is given to Recruit Brown.
think this is the time they've been waiting for. This is the time that the recruits will receive their badge of police certifications. When the recruit's name is called, I would ask that the individual who was asked to pin the badge come to this side of the stage and meet the recruit at the center where Sheriff Gaylor or the Chiefs will present the badge for you to pin it on the uniform. After the recruit has been pinned, a picture will be taken with the Sheriff or Chief and then you may exit the stage and return to your seat. If you are pinning a recruit, I ask that you please make your way to the left side of the auditorium and await the recruit to be called. Sheriff Gail, EL31 is prepared to receive their badges and certifications. Drill instructors, prepare the class to receive their badges and certifications. Jessica K. Bishop. Pinning is Christopher Bishop, Maryland State Police, cousin. Gregory A. Brown, Jr. Pinning is Lieutenant Gregory Brown, Sr. His dad, who is from Philadelphia Police Department, his son, Gregory Brown III,
Zachary D. Burris, penned by his girlfriend, Allison Laurenti. Michael W. Connolly, penned by his girlfriend, Victoria Pelego. Venus Mick Detwaller. Him will be his wife, Tara Detwaller, his sons, Parker and Gavin, and his daughter, Kyle.
Alexander K. Cortiel. Pinning will be his wife, Lori Cortiel, and his son, Gabe. Nicholas J. Glassman. Pinning will be retired Harper County Sheriff's Office, John Glassman. He's dead. Kristen N. Novak, pinning by her father, Paul Novak, and her niece, Azalea. Christopher B. Perra. Penning will be by his mother, Joanne Perra.
Leonard J. Petrovich III. Pinning will be done by his grandfather, retired Baltimore City Police Department, Leonard Petrovich Sr. Nicholas Taylor Rose. Pinning will be by Lieutenant Steve Sherba, Baltimore County Police Department. Jeremy C. Scrippen. Pinning will be by his father, retired Maryland State Police, Jerry Scrippen. At this time, James Rowley, Clerk of the Court, will perform the ceremonial swearing in. Drill instructors, prepare the class. Please raise your right hand 
Ready? Repeat after me. Move. I and state your full name. I and state your full name. Do swear. Do swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. Bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution. And support the Constitution. And the laws thereof. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of law enforcement according to the Constitution and laws of this state. Congratulations. This time I'd like to recognize the following groups and individuals for their support of this graduation. Harper Technical High School. Harper Community College. Harper Community College Dining Services. Harper Community College Technical Crew for the Sound and Lighting. Harper County Sheriff's Office Media and Public Relations Office. Harper County Sheriff's Office Citizens Police Academy Alumni. Harper County Sheriff's Office Explorer Post and Miss Emily Dietz for the video that you saw when you came in. Let's give them a round of applause. By being here this evening, your family, loved ones, friends, and guests have shown how they stand behind you to the start of your law enforcement career. You have the required support, skills, and education to become the future leaders in our chosen profession. On behalf of the Sheriff, the Command Staff, and the Harford County Sheriff's Office Training Academy, I wish you each the best in your future endeavors. Take the opportunity to celebrate tonight. Congratulations. At this time, I would like to ask Reverend Ken Tipton to, the for to come forward and pronounce the benediction. Please stand. Father, we ask your blessings on this, our brand new police officers. We ask you to cover them with your wisdom, your courage, your compassion, and Father, especially with your safety. We ask you to lead them as far as they stand along with all the other police officers in this country between us, the citizens, and a world that's crazy out there. Father, we ask you to bless our Hartford County Sheriff's Office, this county, our state, and we ask you to, God, please, bless America. Amen. Amen. You may be 
decir Drug instructors, prepare to dismiss your class.